from there, we are moving to Middle Tennessee Blue Raiders. And uh, Rick Stock stills a bunch. Of course, he's been there forever. Uh, the last two seasons, three and six last year, four and eight the year before that, as soon as he lost his son at quarterback, yep. they have had issues. They were not great last year. All three of their wins were by one possession. Four of their six losses were by an average of more than 30 points. They got demolished. Yeah. They should be returning a bunch of guys, though, right? They are number 28 in returning production see, this year, 84%. See, this, is thing, this is not a school that just reloads every year. It's yeah. his final year with his son. That was a very senior-heavy team. It oh, was yes. a very experienced team. And then all the guys the last two years were a lot of sophomores, few freshmen, oh, yeah. oh, very yeah. few juniors, very few seniors. Now those guys are older. I do think they're going to be better minus looking at their record from the past. Not overwhelmingly better, but just being in the system and now they're having their time to be to, to be there and to, and, to, and to really play and start. They have got a new transfer quarterback, Bailey Hockman, That's who is cool. the That's NC cool, yeah. State quarterback. That will definitely help. Their new offensive coordinator, you might know this name, Brent Deerman, yeah. former Kansas offensive coordinator under uh, Les Miles. Ton of returning starters, like we talked about. Defense ranked number 124 in 2020. And he's going to open this offense up, by the way. I, I would think so. Yeah, I think I he's going to so. open With, with Deerman up. and with Bailey Hockman. I mean, Hockman won a bunch of games for NC State last that's, year. That's right. So, uh, they've got 10 starters back on defense. I don't know if that's good or not, considering how bad they were. Um, but you would have to assume True. that experience uh, will will help. I do not like their schedule. Yeah, they're They're loaded. They're loaded up with some yeah. some big boy games. Now they do have they got Old Dominion at home. Yeah, they play at UConn. They have uh, Monmouth to start the season. The the to- a win total is four and a half. To go over is minus one twenty five. To go under is minus one hundred five. I'm gonna go under here. Okay. The projected records, by the way, SP Plus has got them at a five and seven. FBI at six and six. I'm gonna go under the four and a half. Okay. I I think it takes a little time to gel here. Uh, because they've got at Virginia Tech, at UT San Antonio, at Charlotte, which is a uh, toss-up game. You know, Marshall's on the schedule. At Liberty is another non-conference game. Like these are, I, these I, are under, tough I games. understand that they also got two two gimmies in Monmouth and UConn yep. that we think they're going to be heavily favored and they're going to win. So they just got to try to win three other games. You know, the the game at UConn, they're only favored by less than a touchdown. Well, that's just like just by the just, numbers. That's just bad numbers. That's okay. This is bad numbers right now. Today. This this team was really bad last year. I understand that. So. You, hang on, <laughs> UConn didn't play last year. What are you going to do when you look at last year's numbers for them? Uh, that's, that's how are you going to pull point. stats on that? That's a valid. They point. sat at home. They did, and some dumbass newspaper gave them a national championship because <laughs> they were so brave. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter at Gary WCE at Chris B. Giannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.